All this, and then what is it? Verse number 12, as we're Revelation chapter number 5, verse number 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, to riches, and thirdly, wisdom. This is something that He gives to us freely. James chapter number 1, verse number 5, tells us all the time that if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and that He giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given Him. We, we need just ask for wisdom and God is waiting to give it to us. Second Chronicles talks about 16, verse number 9, I believe it is, is where he talked about that God's eyes are, are going to and fro about the earth looking who He can give wisdom and power and strength and, and how He can bless somebody. He's desiring to give that to us. He, and I, I need wisdom. I'll be honest, if you raise teenagers... You need wisdom. Yes, amen. If you raise kids, children, you need wisdom. And He has wisdom and He's created all wisdom. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 30, it says this, But of Him ye are in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom, and the righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That's awesome. That He has made unto us wisdom. That if we're asking for wisdom, that all we need is Him. And if we have Him, then God's going to give us that wisdom that we need. And He is worthy of all wisdom. I know I'm moving fast, but not only is it wisdom, but fourthly, receive power, riches, wisdom, and strength. In Psalm chapter number 24, verse number 8, my kids used to sing a song about this. Who is the king of the jungle? Who, who, who is the king of the sea? Who is the king of this universe? Psalm chapter number 24, verse number 8 says this. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. I want to be honest with you. I need strength to make it through every day. I need help to make it through every day. Satan seems to attack and he begins to buffet us on every side. It seems like it's just he is attacking. The demons of hell attack us. Today has been an attack of Satan on us all. Me personally today. But Satan, he is no match for Jesus Christ. He is no match for the Lamb of God that is standing there and these angels are praising Him and the the redeemed people are singing that praise to Him. He is no match for Him. Uh, How how do you get that, Brother Shane? Revelation chapter number 20, verse number 2, the Bible says this, And He laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil. Oh, Revelation chapter number 20, verse number 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him to the bottomless pit, and shut him up. Glory to God. And set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a little season. But then look down in verse number 10. When you get into Revelation chapter number 20, skip down to verse number 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Guess what? Jesus Christ has the strength to overcome the devil himself. He's omnipotent, Jesus Christ, the Lamb, the all-powerful. He is powerful to save. He is powerful to disarm the powers of evil and of hell. And He can and will overthrow Satan one day. And I'm looking forward to the fact that I'm going to be there to be able to see that take place. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to be excited. Because that old devil has worked on us over time. And I'm thankful that he will one day be overthrown. Psalm chapter number 89 says it this way in verse number 13. Thou hast a mighty arm, strong as thy hand, and high as thy right hand. <clears throat> that right arm, that right hand is always signifying most people are right-handed and are stronger on their right hand than they are on their left. 
God is always talking about the power of a right arm, the right hand. Is that power, that strength in Jesus Christ. We go on, there's power, there's riches, there's wisdom, there's strength. Fifthly, honor. He is worthy of all honor. <laughs> John says it, or Jesus Christ said it this way and recorded in John chapter number 5, <clears throat> verse number 23. Jesus said this, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committeth all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Now that's... that's we got to think about that for a moment. <laughs> because Jesus Christ is saying that we should honor the Son. There are a whole lot of people in this world that are not honoring Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As a matter of fact, there are people that want you to pray in the name of God, but they don't want you to mention Jesus. They're all about, oh, God is good, but they don't want anything to do with the Son. The Lamb. Why? Because He was slain. Why? Because He shed blood. Why? Because He is the strength and honor that has redeemed us unto God. People, mankind, desire to make it their own way. As a matter of fact, the Bible goes on in Psalm chapter number 8 tells us this, that He is crowned with honor. Psalm chapter number 8, verse number 5 for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, that, and hast crowned him with honor, with glory and honor. Not only is he crowned with honor, but he's also clothed with honor. In Psalm chapter number 104, 104, verse number 1, the Bible says this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O my Lord, my God, that thou art very great, thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Wow. There is soon coming a day. There are a lot of people, like I said earlier, that don't want to have anything to do with the name of Jesus Christ. There are a lot of people that desire to do nothing with God all my, uh, with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But there is soon coming a day that all will honor Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In Philippians chapter number 2, and this is what we're also seeing in Revelation chapter number 5, but in Philippians chapter number 2, Verse number 10, the Bible says this, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of the things in heaven, of the things in earth, of the things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Praise the Lord. And what is that all about? That leads us to the next one in Revelation chapter number 5, verse number 12. Strength, honor, and Glory. <laughs> Jesus left His glory so that we might be redeemed. To imagine that you just leave for the sake of others. Glory. John chapter number 17, verse number 5, Jesus Christ says this. This is that high priestly prayer in John chapter number 17 that Jesus Christ is praying to God. And now, O Father, glorify Thou me with Thine own self, with the glory, look at this, which I had with Thee before the world was. Jesus Christ didn't have to die to get glory. He already had it. And now He has voluntarily walked upon the face of the earth, died that we could be redeemed, and now He is worthy again to receive glory. <laughs> John saw that glory in John chapter number 1, verse number 14. John said this, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And you say, well, what is he talking about right there? Why is John talking about how he saw, how did he behold or beheld 
as it says in, in John chapter number 1, verse number 14. How did he behold the glory of God? Well, take you back to Matthew chapter number 17. In Matthew chapter number 17, there's three men, the, the inner circle of Jesus Christ. And if you go, that Jesus Christ had 12 disciples, yes, that followed him all the way, but he had more than just those 12. But then he had three that he really spent a lot of personal time with. They were the ones that seemed to go a little bit further with Jesus Christ. And in Matthew chapter number 17, verse number 1, the Bible says this, And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And verse number 2, And was transfigured before them. This is what we call in, in, in the Bible the Mount of Transfiguration. That Jesus Christ, His body, transfigured into what He will be, the glorified bodies that we will have at one day. And was transfigured before them, and His face did shine as the sun, and His raiment was white as the light. And there behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, uh, which is Elijah, talking with them. Then answered Peter, said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Uh, if thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Yet he, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. John was standing there when Jesus Christ absolutely began to have this transfiguration take place and begin to see something absolutely amazing. John was never the same after he saw Jesus Christ. And now he is seeing that same lamb that was slain has the markings of the crucifixion. And now he's standing there and he's remembering that God said, This is my son, hear ye him. I'm well pleased, hear ye him. It made such an impact that John said, Hey, I witnessed it, I saw it, I heard it. By the way, when Jesus Christ came and, and lifted him up and gave this to him and, and told him to begin to pin down the words of Reve the book of Revelation, he says, I saw it, I heard it, it's real. <laughs> Peter even had such a thing. He even talked about it. In 2 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 16, 2 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 16, For we have not followed cunning devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. For He received the, from the Fa God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to Him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, and who I am well... Pleased. Praise God. He says, wow, what glory that Jesus Christ had. And now, look what glory Jesus Christ now has. We need not glory in ourselves, but only in He who is worthy. Jesus Christ. And then lastly, number seven. Blessing. Mm. Blessing. As we begin to look at this blessing I want you to really remember that Jesus Christ absolutely gave His glory that we might be redeemed. In Galatians chapter number 2, verse number 20, Paul says it this way, Not I, but Christ. Who's glorying? Not me but Jesus Christ. Yet not I living, but Christ lives in me. Then lastly, the blessing. Look with me in verse number 12. The word here means this, to be happy. I'm going to ask a dangerous question. Are you happy? Are you really truly happy? Last week I spent a little time kind of down in time and I do something. I did something that I don't really do a lot of. I turned the television on and was just flipping through some of the channels, and and I saw commercials about the medications, and they'll make you happy, or they'll make a difference. And I'll be honest with you. There's there's a real thing called depression, and I, I'm not minimizing the, minimizing that at all. I under, I know that that is a real thing. 
But are you happy? Are you blessed in the Lord? Are you happy in Jesus Christ? And then can I ask you this? Is Jesus Christ happy with you? Because that's what these angels are saying, that worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive, skip down, blessings. To receive, to be happy. The psalmist wrote it this way, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. That's amazing. And then there's the adoration. i got to quickly look at verse number 13. I'm just going to run through this. Look at this. So the, the people of the redeemed are singing. And then that begins to make the angels the acclamation to the, be able to say, My praise Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise the Lamb. And then how the angels begin to sing, it goes further. It leaves heaven. Look at verse number 13. And every creature which is in heaven were there, boom, and on earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Not only do the angels praise God and the Lord, but not only do the redeemed praise the Lord and sing praises, but all creation joins in the adoration of the Lamb. According to the book of Romans, right now, creation is not singing. Creation is groaning. They're desiring that God, Jesus Christ, would come and redeem this earth. But here in Revelation chapter number 5, verse number 13, all creation joins in singing praises to God. And by the way, may I say this? I want you to notice this, and I don't have time to get under this, but the, uh, in, into this, but it says also, under the earth. Hmm. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There is no place where the praises of God will not be heard or made at this point. You say, well, what is Revelation 5 all about? The adoration of the Lamb. The adoration of Jesus Christ. There is but one voice in harmony. What is it? Praise to the Lamb. And then lastly, I'm going to read this verse. And it can speak for itself. Revelation chapter number 5, verse number 14. And the four beasts said, Amen. <laughs> what more needs to be said? Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Simply put, what does amen mean? I agree. So in other words, when, when, whenever a preacher is preaching, someone's singing, someone's saying something, doing something, and someone says, Amen, that means I agree with that. I agree that God is good. I agree that Jesus Christ is the Savior. I agree. And the four beasts, the living creatures around it, the 24 elders fall down and worshiping, and what can they say? What can I say? Amen. I can't wait to be there. I agree. I want to be there. The good news is, the promise to me in this Bible says, I will be. And if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will too. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for this time. Lord, it's been difficult been trying but God we thank you for even the tough times God make your peace and joy 
so real to us. And Lord, I beg you, God, that you'd have your will and your way. Lord, throughout our lives, Lord, may we take this awesome chapter, chapter number five, to our hearts to know that one day we will be in the throne room of God singing the praises of the redeemed. Lord, thank you, God, that you'd put that, Lord, even on us right now. And God, I beg you that you would let us sing praises to you even while we're here on this earth. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for joining us here at Calvary Baptist Church today. Our prayer is that you have been blessed and encouraged by the uplifting music and the message heard from the Word of God. My prayer is that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Strengthen that relationship and then strive to grow closer to the precious Son of God. We can help you in any way with your walk with Christ. Please do not hesitate to contact us. I look forward for you to join us next time at Calvary Baptist Church.